All right, what's going on everyone? YouTube, I'm NES Roller. Welcome to a brand new DVD and Blu-ray update. Yeah, I got a bunch of stuff. As always, I gotta do my typical camera adjustments. As always, I got a whole bunch of awesome stuff to show you guys this month. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed my rigging reviews and my video reviews that I've been um, posting here on YouTube and over on the 22 Shots of Moods and Horror website. So, let's get into it. So, first let's talk about a film that I that I really felt connected to and I was very um, uh, very moved by it. And it's every once in a while I watch a film, I, I, I did a written review on this if you want to read it. Every once in a while I, do, I watch a film that not only changes the way that I watch cinema, but it changes the way that I look at life. And, um, you know, I have that kind of experience watching movies every so often. And I definitely had an experience with this film. Um, not so much the sequels, but definitely the first film in this um, tr trilogy, if you want to call it. And that is the, the Paradise Lost films. Um, if you guys haven't seen these three films, you guys should do yourself a favor and check them out. Because it's one of the most... Um, powerful pieces of American cinema that I've seen in a very long time. Um, so this, um, these three films basically follow the story of the murders at Robin Hood Hills in West Memphis, Arkansas. If you guys are familiar with the trio of the West Memphis Three, then these are what these films are about. It's pretty much about um, these three kids um, in West Memphis, Arkansas that gets uh, charged with the murder of three eight-year-olds who were brutally murdered and castrated in Robin Hood Hills. And um, these three documentaries follow the case from, um, this one came out in 1996, but it has footage from 19, when the case started in 1994, and the third one came out in 2011, and um, it has, you know, the most recent footage, and this one came out in 2000. So... Basically, these three kids were, um, you know, uh, guilty of murder, if you want to call that, even though they obviously were innocent. But because of the American justice system, they got, um, you know, they got a guilty charge because they were different. And because they listened to bands like Metallica and they dressed different. And, um, you know, they didn't agree with the, with the Christian religion um, in this relatively... Um, Christian community in West Memphis and it's just things like that and um, totally obscure and absolutely absurd um, evidence that was brought upon them that is absolutely um, you know not a liable source of evidence against these three people um, and you know the jury was obviously biased because of the media attention the case got and things like that and the documentary explores all these things and like I said, this, the first film is really um, one of the most powerful pieces of American cinema that I've watched in a long time. I know the film came out, you know, 20 years ago, but um, just watching it now, um, I really, really, really was moved by it. So uh, if you guys get a chance, check it out. Um, it's definitely a film that will rightfully so be on my top 10 list of all time um, from now on. It's a really, really fantastic um, film really really powerful um, stuff right there. The second one, um, it's it's really really solid. Like I said, it's it's not as good as the first one. Um, it reuses a lot of the footage from the first film, but um, presents new evidence and things like that. It was only four years. No, no, actually, it was only they were in jail. You know, six years after this was done. So um, you know, you see six years pass, and then the third one, um, you know, this is definitely the biggest leap. Eleven years. So they were in jail for. You know, at this point, they were in jail for, I think, 17 years, 16 or 17 years at this point. So these guys sat in jail, one on death row for 17 years for a crime they didn't commit, and these documentaries get into it. Really, really fantastic. Pick them up if you guys get a chance. They're really, really fantastic pieces right there. And the music from Metallica, it's really, really well done and really good. It really, really fits the film. I can't, I can't recommend those enough. Uh, let's get into some family video pickups. Uh, these... Yeah. 
these four were all a buck fifty. Uh, we have Everly. This is the Joe Lynch film. If you guys have been listening to the podcast, um, you know, JP has been following the production of this film. Um, it's definitely one I've been wanting you to check out. Um, we basically follow, follow um, Everly. She is a, I would say, an escort prostitute type of a character who is um, held captive by this uh, Asuka Ma boss. And she is um, stuck in this room as all these mobsters are trying to come in and kill her because, you know, she's done wrong to this mob boss. And it's just a, it's an okay film, to be completely honest. It's not as good as, let's say, The Raid. I mean, I don't think anything is going to be as good as, a ra as The Raid for a long time. But um, it's action-packed, I guess. There's a lot of violence, a lot of gun shooting, not too much hand-to-hand -hand combat. Um, it's more just about the guns and things like that. There's some pretty good practical effects. I had to give them that. There's this one scene with acid that looks really, really solid. And you can tell it was practical. So I got to give Joe Lynch credit on that one. It's okay. If you guys find it for cheap, I say give it a watch once. But I don't see myself returning to it um, ever. But um, it's okay. Uh, also for Buck Fifty Bedlam, this is an After Dark original film. Um, I haven't got a chance to watch this yet, but I've heard it's actually not good. So... Um, I don't really have high expectations on this one, but uh, for a buck fifty, you know, I'll give it a watch. Uh, Deep in the Darkness, we were supposed to do this on the podcast, but I watched it back then. I don't really remember much of it, but um, from what I remember, it's not it's not good. Um, it's pretty mediocre, and it's definitely far from the best children film. So I, I would say pass on this one also. Deep in the Darkness, but I have the other children film, so I just grabbed it because it's Green Factory and I have all the other chillers. Uh, next we have Roadside. This is released by Image. This is from the same director who they contracted in uh, Madison County. Um, this is a movie I've been wanting to check out for a while. Um, I've been doing a lot of reviews on other stuff so I haven't really had a chance to check um, many of these out yet because I just got them. But Roadside, very curious about this one. We have Disciples. Now, this is a badass cast, if I have to say. We have Tony Todd, Bill Mosley, Angus Grimm, and um, Leah Quigley. This is a film released by Uncourt, who, you know, they usually don't do very good quality films, to be completely honest. But look at that cast. That is fucking awesome. That is a sick cast. So, for a buck fifty, I had to check it out. If anybody has seen this, let me know if it's any good. Because with a cast like that, it's that's a, that's an awesome cast. Disciples. Ugh. We have Cold July. This is supposed to be like a neo-noir western type film. I've heard this film is supposed to be fucking fantastic. Like everybody that I've talked to has said it's really, really good. So I'm very curious and excited to check this one out. Released by IFC. Cold in July. Heard really great things about that one. Another one that I've heard pretty good things, and that is Evidence. This is supposed to be like a found footage type, um, whodunit murder type film. It's supposed to be pretty good. It's a buck. Why not? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I grabbed Lucky Origins, finally. Um, I watched this when it first came out on iVideo On Demand. This movie blows shit. It's terrible. It's, it's complete ass, but I have the other Leprechaun film, so... It was a dollar. I needed another one. Um, for the 10 for 10 deal at Family Video, I needed another one, so whatever. It was a dollar. I needed it. Cheers again. Still humid as shit here in Chicago. So, got a drink. Uh, I am Santa Claus. Uh, this is a Morgan Spurlock documentary about five guys who live being Santa Claus during the holidays, and they get really into it, one being Mick Foley, who you guys know Mick Foley from wrestling and things like that. These days, he's really into being Santa Claus, so he's one of the people that are in this documentary. It's okay. Um, you know, I still think Morgan Spurlock's, you know, prime is, would supersize me, and um, a sh the show 30 Days, which used to be on FX, which was really, really good. But I am Santa Claus, you know, it's it's pretty, it's okay. You know me, I love my documentaries, so. Next we have 88, this has um, Catherine Isabel and Christopher Lloyd in it. It's like an action 
Everly type film, but not the same. We'll see. For a buck. Went up and eyeing for a while, and I really like Catherine Isabel, so we'll see. 88. Next we have Life Itself. Um, you know, about my idol, Roger Ebert. Um, you guys know I write a lot about cinema and film analysis and stuff like that, and you know, being from Chicago, you know, nobody is as important in my life and influence, influenced me as much as Roger Ebert. Love it or, love it or hate him, you know, that guy was a pure, a pure genius, and, um, you know, even though he didn't really love our horror movies very much, you know, he still, he still gave him a fair chance and he still watched them. So, you know, you know, he, he will always be an important part of my life. So this is a really, really brilliant documentary about Roger and it's very sweet. Um, you know, Steve James, who did, um, Hoop Dreams did this one and it's, just, it's really fantastic. So if you guys get a chance to check life itself out. I highly recommend it if you guys are a, film, a fan of film and film analysis and just Roger himself. It's really, really fantastic. So life itself, finally really happy to have a copy of that film because I really, really loved it. Oh, we have Dead Snow 2. I watched this movie back when it first came out. Um, I actually was able to catch a screening of it uh, on the big screen. This film is fun. It is over the top fucking insanity. Um, if you guys are familiar with the first Dead Snow, this one just brings up the craziness up a scale. It's just crazy fun. Over the top. If you guys like fun, stupid, head-exploding type films, check this one out. <laughs> Finally happy to have a copy of this. Finally. So I'm, I'm, I really like this one, that one. Um, VHS Viral, yeah. Not a huge fan of this. I talked about this on the podcast, but I wanted to see the extra segment. Um, you know, Bone Storm and Dante the Great. So I picked this one up simply because of the fact I wanted to see that, and for a buck I figured it was worth the pickup just so I could be able to watch those those shorts that weren't in the video on demand version when I watched it way back at release date. So not very good, <laughs> nowhere near VHS two. But um, curious to check out those other shorts. And finally, from Kino, we have um, Vantamos. This is a French serial from 1913 to 1914. Um, this is from the same director who did um, Less Vampires, which I talked about on the podcast and I've talked about before, which is a really, really fantastic, um, another really fantastic French crime serial about this evil organization called Less Vampires. And they, um, it's just really, really, um, uh, you know, ahead of its time. And I'm curious to see how this one is because this is, you know, three years before Less Vampires, if I stand correct. I think that came out in 1916. This is 1913 and 1914. It's a five episode uh, serial that ranks, you know, at a, at a good five and a half hours. So I'm going to need some time to get through this one. But it's one I've been wanting to pick up. Um, I just have to pick up the, the Flicker Alley Judex release of. Um, this is this guy's last serial, and then I have, you know, his main three French crime serials that he did. So I'm happy to have this one. It's a really nice addition with the slipcase and three disc set. It's supposed to be a really, really great um, early serial, so I'm excited to check this one out. You know me with my, uh, my silent films. I really, really love them, so come on, kids. Really, really excited to check this one out soon. So that's Phantomos. Let's get into the Blu-rays. We have The Last American Virgin. I just did a review on this. It should be my last video. So if you guys want to check out my review on this one. It's a really um, interesting coming of age film. Um, it's not the best one, but it's pretty solid. So if you guys want to hear more of my thoughts on this one, go check my, re um, my re video review. It should be the last video on the list. Last American Virgins, released by Olive Films. Next we have Student Bodies from 1981, also released by Olive Films. I did a real review on this film. I'll put a link down below if you want to read my review over on the 22 Shots of Moods and Horror website. This is known to be the first horror parody film, and it is hilarious. It is so damn funny. Um, it makes me laugh every time I watch it. It's like the second or third time I've watched it. And this makes me crack up every single time. Um, 
there's this one joke in the middle of the film with this guy bashing the MPA. If you guys listen to the podcast, you know how much I hate the MPA. So that just made me, this makes me crack up every time I see that scene. So it's a really, really funny movie. It's a film that you get drunk with your friends and pop it in and watch it. It's really, really funny. So pick up this release from Olive Films. Uh, I know this got a Blu-ray release before from Legend Films, which is like in this double pack. I have it over there. I just want to get it. Um, it's not it's not restored or anything like that. This one you can see has been through a little bit more restoration and it looks really good. So pick it up. Really really funny. Next we have the sender. I did a written review on this one also. Um, so um, I'll put a link down below to this one also. Um, released by Olive Films. Um, I don't really want to get into much on this one. It's one that you I had to talk about in writing. Because I'll splur and say something that I didn't mean to say. So check out The Sender. If you guys get a chance, I'll say that. It's worth a watch. Released by Olive. Next we have Cub. This comes from Artsploitation. We've been doing this on the podcast. Um, the first episode back from Season 3. So stay tuned for that. Don't want to talk about it because we talked about it in length on the show. So Cub. Released by Artsploitation. Support Artsploitation, guys. They are... A prime company. They release some awesome stuff. And if you get it from the website, you get this kick ass patch. So check out Cub. I'm not going to say more about it, but I'll talk about it on the show. Next, we have Wormwood Road of the Dead. This is an IFC Midnight Screen Factory collab. Um, really cheap, 10 bucks. Um, so I had to grab it. A really bad shit crazy zombie film. Uh, you know, it's really good. I highly recommend it. Everybody that I've talked to seems to really like it also. So Ten bucks, another IFC that I needed, so look at that cover art guys. That is awesome. That's Wormwood. What am I doing with time? I've kind of been Okay. Kind of been rambling a little bit. Almost finished. I still want these to tip over and then I have to re put them in order again. Alright. We got a few criterions here that I picked up. We got Judix. If you guys just heard me say this title, uh, you know, this is a film that was based on the serial that I was just talking about from 1963, directed by um, George Van Hugh. I think that's how you pronounce his name. He did um, Eyes Without a Face, which is an absolute masterpiece. So, a film that I've been really wanting to pick up for a while now. I've heard this is actually really good. Um, put out by Criterion. Really nice edition. Got a Blu ray and two DVDs. Three disc set for a film like this. Gotta love Criterion. And it has this really nice book. So that's Judix. Really happy to have this finally. Finally grabbed Eraserhead. There's not much more to say about this. It's a masterpiece. It's awesome. Really nice edition. Digi pack, thick. Nice. One more sip of water, and that should be it. We have Hiroshima Mon Amour from 1959. Uh, this is a French New Wave film. Um, really, really fantastic. Um, awesome cinematography. If you guys are familiar with French New Wave, you know what you're going to get with this. You know, non-trained uh, non actors, you know, shot on location, weird editing, all that kind of stuff. So, But it's one of the prime examples next to Breathless of French New Wave. So... Um, it's a really fantastic film, so if you guys get a chance to pick this one up, I highly recommend it. Really fantastic edition from Criterion. A really, really, um, I would say, confusing film the first time anybody watches it. I've watched it probably four or five times now throughout you know, film school. It's a highly um, used film in school, and I still haven't fully grasped the film, so don't be afraid to watch it the first time, because it's definitely one that, that takes some time to wrap your mind around. And this one comes from our good friend Derek yep, over on just the as I feared I was rambling on too much and I reached my limit on my camera. Sorry about that, folks, for the edit. So like I said, this movie comes from Derek from the 20 Shots of Moods and Horror Facebook page. You know, the kindest guy around. Always hooks it up, especially with me. He sends me some awesome stuff, and this is nonetheless. He's so generous, and, um, you know, it's people like him. That's why me, Moods, and JP keep on doing the show. And that is John Frankenheimer's 1966 film, 
seconds. Now, I know he talked about this film during one of the voice panels that he's left, so it's one I've been wanting to check out. And the fact that he sent this to me is absolutely fucking fantastic. Thank you so much, Derek. It's so kind and generous of you. Thank you again, buddy. I'm, this is the next one I'm going to watch. I'm very excited to check this one out. Thank you again. So, so kind and generous. So that is seconds. Thank you again, everybody, for watching. Like I said, sorry again for the edit. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And as always, you can follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash nesruler22. And as always, if you want to read my written review reviews, you can do so at the 22 Shots of Moods and Horror.com. That's 22 Shots of Moods and Horror.com. Hope everybody's doing well, and I'll talk to you guys soon. See you guys.